Hey guys, this is Andrew with HKN, and today I have a MATLAB tutorial for you. And this first MATLAB tutorial is going to be on how to input data and also how to make pretty plots in, uh, in MATLAB. So, the first thing we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about the different, uh, the basic data types of MATLAB. So MATLAB stands for Matrix Laboratory, so the basic things that you can do in uh, the basic data type in this is MATLAB, is matrix, matrices, sorry. Um, so that means that pretty much everything is done with a matrix. So that includes a uh, single column matrix or single row matrices, which we call vectors. And so the first thing I'm going to talk about is how we enter, enter lists of numbers. So if we have a bunch of data points, say like x values for a plot, uh, we can enter them into MATLAB as what we call vectors. So there are two different kinds of vectors, and those are row vectors and column vectors. So they're written in similar ways in MATLAB, as you can see here. Um, but the first, the difference is that when you execute them, so for instance, if I execute this and it prints to the command console, you'll see it, pr it prints in columns. So we have column one, column two, column three, all the way up to 10. The, the, if you do the column vector, what happens is that if you execute this, you see it prints in rows. And so these are two fundamentally different things. If you try to use them interchangeably, it won't work. So always be sure to know which one you're doing. In order to separate a, in order to start a new row in MATLAB, you have to terminate your row with a semicolon. Otherwise, if you just use commas, or in reality you don't need the comma, just a single space will denote a new column. So you'll keep making new columns as you space until you use a semicolon, then once you use a semicolon, MATLAB will notice a new row. So that's the first thing you have to make sure you're using row vectors and column vectors. So in order to enter data, we want to just type it in. So very, very easily in a script file or in, uh, even in just the directly into the command window, um, we can just type in numbers. So for instance, you can use, I have my variable here, x-axis typed. So you can literally just type into the command console, as you can see on the left-hand side here, um, x-axis typed equals, uh, you have to use an open bracket to denote the start of a matrix or a vector. And so I'm going to use row vectors instead of column vectors, just for ease. And so we're gonna have the numbers one to 10 in here. And like I said, you don't actually need uh, commas. They are kind of just there for, um, for formatting sakes. Um, and if you use a semicolon at the end, it will suppress the output. So you see there, it didn't print what x-axis typed is, but you see on the right-hand side in the workspace that it actually did save it as the numbers we wanted. So for the other ones, I'm going to, for this one, I would do the same thing, but because I've written it in a script, I can just execute it. And you see it's executed and it's moved to the workspace. So now we're going to figure out we have x values and y values. We want to plot them. So you have to make sure when you're plotting things that you have vectors of the same length. If they are not of the same length, this will not work. So the x-axis typed vector has 10 elements in it. And the y-axis typed vector has 10 elements in them. So in order to plot this, I have to make sure that they're both of the same length and that they both are either row vectors or column vectors. If they're different, this will not work. It'll actually throw you an error and say uh, they have to have the same number of elements and things like that, but check that they're both row or both column vectors. So in order to plot something, once you have your x vector and your y vector that you're going to plot against each other, the command is just simply this, plot parentheses. The first argument is your x values and the second argument is your y values. So if we execute this, it will pull up a uh, it will pull up a figure, and you see we have a plot here. And so this is actually just the beginning parts of a sine wave, but you can see that it actually worked. It plotted our x values from one to ten, and it has our y values accordingly. Um, but this plot looks kind of sparse here. So what we're going to do is we're going to spice this up a little bit and put. Um, a title and x-axis labels and y-axis labels and all this uh, at a later point. So um, the first thing we're going to do 
here is we're going to input the uh, we're going to input data from a separate file. So this actually happens a lot when you're working with oscilloscope data. So if you're taking data from a sensor, uh, you get the you get the data as what we call comma separated value files or dot CSVs. In dot CSVs, they're a lot like having matrices or or vectors, except instead of being nice and uh, typed up in MATLAB, they're a text file with uh, different rows being just a different line and columns being separated by commas, hence the name comma separated value. So we're going to import those into a MATLAB uh, nice data, uh, data structure. So in order to do that, you go to the home tab here and you click on import data. There's also ways to do this from the command prompt to look it up if you would like, but you can, um, but in doing it in the, uh, the console is totally fine as well. Uh, so you go to the data file you're looking for, for instance, the .csv here, and you open it up. This will open the import wizard, and when it does, you can see this is what the CSV file looks like. It kind of looks like an Excel spreadsheet. So the first, the first row has the titles of the, uh, of the vectors, and these are column vectors, as you can see. So, what we want to import them as is column vectors. Um, it's automatically selected all the data for us, so that's nice, but you have to make sure that all of the data is selected, and in our case it is. Um, it is using uh, replace unimportable cells with uh, NAN, which is what we want. So what that means is when we plot it, it won't just put a zero if it can't import the number, or if it's just, so for instance on an oscilloscope, if there's no number there, it puts a uh, period. And so instead of importing a period, it'll just put NAN, which is cannot display, or I forget what the actual acronym is. But uh, it will not display it for you, which is nice. It won't just make it a zero and mess up your plot. Um, and also make sure that the delimiter is a comma, because this is a comma separated value. So once that's all selected, we're going to import the selection. And also one last thing, it says a uh, variable name row here. So it takes the first row as being the variable names of the column vector. So we're going to import the selection here. It'll give you a confirmation here that we have a 50 by one time vector, a 50 by one input vector, and a 50 by one output vector. And you can see over here that they've been imported input, output, and time. So once that happens, we're going to plot them again. So we're going to actually plot those things. And we see that we have a sine wave and a square wave, and they're all both plotted versus time. So you can plot two things on one graph by just doing x comma y comma x comma y. And you can continue that for however many things you want to plot on the same graph. So now, in order to make this look a little pretty, we're going to use some commands here. You can take a look at them for yourself but they are title, x-axis label, y-axis label, and uh, we're going to put a legend in here. Uh, the arguments for title are the title name in single quotes. Uh, font size is a parameter, so we're going to edit the font size, and then we're going to make the font 18. The x-axis label and y-axis label have the same uh, syntax, and the legend has uh, whatever your first input is in plot, uh, is going to be named input, second input is going to be named output, and then location tells you where we're going to put the legend, and it's going to be northeast, which means that we're going to have it at the top and to the right, so it's going to be placed over here somewhere. So if I execute all this code very quickly, um, what we have in the end is a figure that is much more nicely formatted. Uh, if we wanted to make it even better, we could edit the axes a little bit so that uh, we can see more of the waves. But at this point, you can kind of see um, that, it, that it looks a lot nicer than it did. We have um, units on each side and big, nice titles, so it looks a lot better this way. So that is how you import data and how you make a, a little prettier looking graph. Um, so now we're going to talk about how to make 3D graphs. And the 3D graphs, you need an x, y, and z axis. So we're going to import the x axis right now uh, and the y axis. And they're just the numbers 0 to 9. This is shorthand in MATLAB, which basically means create a row vector from the number 0 to the number 9 and increment by 1 each time. So this is going to be of length 10, going from 0 to 9. And the y axis is the exact same thing. 
uh, the z-axis now, instead of being just a single, uh, a single vector, has to be a matrix. So that means that this, uh, the top left hand corresponds to 0, 0. The bottom left hand corresponds to 0, 9. The top right hand corresponds to 9, 0 in the, plot, in the uh, plots. So if I, act, if I uh, execute this and import it, we can now uh, plot the we can now plot the uh, the 3D graph, and the command for that is surf. So we have surf is like the plot for uh, three dimensions. So the syntax is surf your x-axis values, your y-axis values, and then your z-axis uh, matrix. So if we import this now, we figure all figure does is open up a new figure for us. So if we had other plots up, it won't overwrite the plots. So we import these and it plots it for us in 3D. And actually, if you want to take a look at it, you can look at the, uh, this little rotate thing here and then kind of just drag around and see it in three dimensions. So kind of cool. And uh, you can, if you want just a color map, for instance, you can take a top view. Uh, it takes a little bit of practice to do this. There's also a console command to do it. But uh, you can see you could also have a color map where colors represent the z-axis as opposed to actually being three dimensions, but having it in three dimensions I personally think looks better. So it actually, you can see that it works. The top, the highest value is in the back right at 9, 9, and the lowest value 0 is in the front at 0, 0. So it works out. So now the last thing we're going to do is tell you how to plot best fit lines. And um, the way that you do that is first that we're going to, uh, uh, first I'll clear the console here. Um, but we're going to create, say, a current versus voltage um, plot. So we're going to import, import current and voltage values. So as you can see, I'm using the shorthand again. We're just taking the numbers 0 to 10. So these vectors for current and voltage are going to be of length 11, which you can see here and here. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to plot them versus each other. So if I plot current on the x-axis and voltage on the y-axis, the slope of the line should be resistance because of Ohm's law. And because all of my values are equal, I should get a resistance of 1. But in order to make this more interesting, what I'm going to do is you don't actually need to know too much about this, but I've added some random error to the voltage values. So all this does is it adds plus or minus uh, some random value to each voltage value so that uh, we don't have an exact graph because the best fit line of an exact graph is not that interesting. Um, so now we're going to actually get the coefficients of our best fit line. And the, in order to do that, we need to use a function called polyfit. And polyfit takes as arguments your x values, your y values. So we're letting this line now. We have our x values, which are current, y values, which are voltage and then the order of the line we want to fit. So we want a straight line here because we know the relationship is going to be linear. So we use an order one function, which means it's going to be of the form y equals mx plus b. And what coefficients is going to be is when we execute this, when we execute this line here, is it's going to be a row vector of, and you can see that over here, coefficients is a row vector, and it has two values here. And those values correspond to uh, m and b. So they're the coefficients of the, uh, of the x terms in here. If I had, or, an, if I had put 2 here and I, wanted a, and I wanted a parabola, so a parabolic fit, um, I, would have a, a, I would have three values in coefficients, and they would be the coefficients of x squared, the coefficients of x, and then the constant term. Um, so now in order to get the actual line, that we want, um, we have to generate the y values. We're going to use the same x values, but we have to generate the y values for the best fit line. And in order to do that, we use uh, this command here, which is polyval. And what polyval does is it takes that coefficients vector that you just generated and the x values that we're going to use and just, and just gives you an equal sized vector to your x values so that you can plot them. Um, of values for your, uh, for your best fit line. So if I execute this, you'll see that fit line is a 1 by 11 double, so the same as current, which is our x values. 
And all this is is the you plug in the x values into the y equals mx plus b with the coefficients gotten from our best fit line. So this will all get a little more clear once I plot this. So what we're going to do is this next section of code here that I'm highlighting will um, execute all of the will execute the plotting of all these things. So as you can see, we have plot, we're plotting current versus voltage. And if we add another comma in here with this BO in quotes, in single quotes here, what that means is we're going to make the points that we're plotting blue, and they're going to be circles. <clears throat> then we are going to plot current, which is our X values, versus the best fit line, and we're going to make the best fit line red. So then we're going to add some nice uh, titles here. So for instance here, I'm going to make the title, um, I'm going to make the title font size a little bigger. And I'm going to make it 18, so that's bigger than the axis size because it's more important. And you can see I changed the legend here. So in this case, the legend is going to be in the bottom, the bottom right-hand corner instead of the top right-hand corner. So I made this southeast instead of northeast. Um, so if I execute all this code here, what it's going to do, it's going to open a figure, and it's going to plot the two values. So you see we have kind of a random spattering of, um, a random spattering of voltage values. And we plotted the best fit line here. And if we take the slope of this best fit line, we should get resistance. Um, luckily, the slope of the best fit line is the m value in, uh, in the y equals mx plus b. And we can get that from coefficients, the coefficients vector that we got, because the coefficients vector stored the m, which is the coefficient of the x value. So I can just call the resistance to be the first value in coefficients. So in order to pick out a certain value from a vector, you type the vector's name, and then in parentheses next to it, you'd say the number in the vector that you want. So it's the first value in here, uh, because it goes uh, highest order coefficient to lowest order coefficient from left to right in the row vector. Um, so the first one is the slope, and so we're going to pick that one out. MATLAB indexes with the first term being one, which annoys computer scientists. So if we evaluate this, you can see it plots out resistance, and we find that the resistance is about 1.02. Um, this is because of the random error that I had, which you know you will have, which will happen if you have uh, if you're taking real values, um, and that's why we use best fit lines. So the actual resistance was one, but we measured a resistance of 1.02, which is within a reasonable amount of error. So this is why MATLAB can be very very helpful. It can help you make uh, nice graphs, and it makes data manipulation very very easy with very large amounts of values. So I hope you guys learned something and uh, have a nice day.